time for Scott J. Hoffman Reports. Finding answers to questions that really need answers through question and answer sessions with the people with all the answers to the questions at hand. The end of the year awards here at Resurgent Capital Services are an event looked forward to by all. The inventory management department was put in charge of this year's festivities. And while it's customary to have the senior vice president assume the hosting duties, wine. I was brought in. Right, right, right. I was brought in to dig deeper into who should be the host this year. I began my research with company president and local running legend Tim Grant. His answers are both helpful and confusing. I first asked him about the key to success of the company. Well, I know what I want to say. I just have to think of how to say it in four words or less. So I think I'd say, as, uh, in all seriousness, I would say every one of you. Hmm. Uh, be honest, Tim. If you could give yourself an Eagle Award every year, you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> what is a trick question? Because I, I think uh, it must be a trick question because hmm. the answer otherwise would, would, would be obvious, wouldn't it? Very serious question now, Tim. If you had to fight one other executive in a cage match, who would it be and why? And you can't say Kessler, that's just not fair. Well, as you know, I've been training to be a cage fighter, so that's an excellent question. And I think you need to lay off a of Kester. I mean, it's like the saying goes, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. What was the question again? Oh, right, right, the cage fight. Um, I think, um, you know, that being said about Scott, you know how Tom Thurman is always mentioning fitting into the conversation somewhere that he played both football and baseball in college. Um, well, that's all well and good, but I'm pretty sure that I could take him. So uh, I think a cage match would be an excellent opportunity to prove that. So I think Tom Thurman. All right, last question, Tim, in all seriousness. Can I borrow $10,000? <laughs> You're kidding. No. Still in search of more information, and hopefully 10 Gs, I went next door to the host from a few years back, Mr. Scott Kester. It's common practice to throw projectiles into the audience during the awards in order to get people involved. Um, who in the resurgent family would you like to throw a projectile at, and why? I gotta say my man Michael Keaton, um, yeah, because he's a fringe left Democrat. Um, you know, he, and I, he and I go back and forth all the time on politics, but uh, you know, I, I'd like to take him out. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was speaking with the robust Mr. Keaton about his minuscule British import of a vehicle. Ironically, for the past few years, you've been driving a rather large SUV. Why the oxymoronish choice of vehicle? Yeah, I gotta say, Scott, I like being up higher. You know, being you know fairly somewhat vertically challenged. You know, as I am, as you well know. Uh, you know, I like being up above the people. You know, and I mean, I you know I could I could literally roll over Keaton's little little uh, Mini Cooper and not even know it. Last question, Scott. Who do you look up to? Well, we don't have that kind of time. Who are your heroes in life? You know, I gotta say the crocodile hunter, you know, Steve Irwin. Um, I'm gonna go back in the past, uh, Spud Webb. You know, that may not mean a lot to a lot, a lot of younger people in the audience, but uh, right. he was a five foot seven, you know, NBA basketball player. I think you gotta give him a lot of props. Yeah. Um, and and then many, me, obviously. I wanted to ask Mr. Keaton about the root cause of this feud, so I went straight to the source. Well, you know, Todd, that's that's a really good question. Uh, you know, I'd have my name isn't Todd, actually. Scott? No. Uh, no. You're not Todd Wagner? Uh, no, I'm not. Wow. Oh, that's, that's really weird. I, I always thought you were Todd Wagner. I, I'm definitely not Todd. I'm, I'm Scott. Oh, K Kester. Yes, that's right. I'm Scott Kester. Oh, oh. Wow, you, you seem a lot taller in person. Mm -hmm. uh, well, anyhow, that's... <laughs> i got to tell you, that's a huge relief. I was... Uh, I was really kind of worried about this interview when you sat down. Uh, how, how so? You know, well, I, I really didn't give you very good reviews these last two years. I mean, I mean, every time I saw you, you, you were out of your seat. You were up, you know, screwing around on the seventh floor. Well, that's, that's because I work on seven. Well, don't you think I know that now? Uh, anyhow, listen, uh, during your presentation, you made your political leanings quite clear. At one point, even comparing the president to those of the Simeon persuasion. Do you regret doing that now that Bush has cemented his legacy as one of the most intelligent leaders this country has ever had? Yeah, you know, look, <laughs> funny thing, I never really had any issues with Bush. I, I, I kind of like the guy. Um, you know, don't tell anyone, but I, I kind of just said those things to impress Tim. Uh, I'm not sure that I follow. Well, you know, because Tim... Oh, no. Don't, don't, don't tell me that Tim 
liked Bush. Feeling as though I'd gotten nowhere, I decided to take a moment to just kind of recharge my batteries. I am the best reporter. The best! Feeling revitalized, I turned to the man behind the inventory management department to see the reasons why he felt he should head up this year's awards position. Well, Scott, um, I think there are three things. Mm -hmm. um, one, I've never spent more than 36 hours in jail. Uh, two, uh, I'm tall enough to ride the roller coasters at Carowinds. And three, I'm pretty sure Brad Pitt's not available. At this point, I'd like to ask you some questions to see how qualified you truly are to be this year's host. Are you ready? Let's go. Shoot. As of August 08, uh, how many years has Resurgent been in existence? 55? No, 10. 10. 10 years. I'll go with 10. Uh, okay, okay. Let's get a little tougher then. What is the square root of 139,876? 374. Wow, that is right. Okay, let's do some quantum physics questions for you here. Uh, what is Planck's constant? I'm sorry, quantum physics? Yes, okay. quantum physics. Okay. Um, what is Planck's constant? Planck. Planck's constant. Uh, 6.63 times 10 to the neg negative 34 joule seconds. Very good, very good. One of the little known requirements for this role is that the host have a familiarity with potatoes. You don't need to know why that matters at this point, but I will need to know your level of expertise with this particular starch. Potatoes, okay. Well, I, I, well, I think there's one thing, one, one key thing to remember is that in the storage process with fresh cut potatoes, mm -hmm. It's important to soak them in a mixture of sodium sulfite and carbonic acid. Now once you do this, you can store those fresh cut potatoes for up to 16 days at a temperature between 33 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you do that, you won't experience any increase in discoloration during the frying process. Word has it that you're a decent golfer. Please explain what a player's index means. Does this translate to a course slope? If so, how? And try to do this in 20 words or less. Go. 20 words. Hmm. Okay. Well, the slope is actually a measure of a golfer's potential. And the way you calculate that is you want to take your last 20 rounds that you've played and you count your 10 best. So what you do is you take the course's rating and subtract your score. You then take the average of those 10 best and multiply it by 0.96. That gives you your differential. You then apply the differential to the course that you're playing when you show up, and that gives you a handicap. And what most people don't know is that every course has also a bogey rating. So the difference between the rating and the bogey rating is then multiplied by 5.381, and that determines the course of slope. So therefore, you can clearly see that the slope is an indication of the relative difficulty of a golf course for a scratch golfer versus a bogey golfer. Excellent. Thanks glad for your time, Tom. Glad I, I, could help. Yeah. glad I could help. Well, the answer was now clear to me. Tom Thurman was not only Mensa material, but he was just suave and debonair enough to stand before you on this very stage.